Hello everyone, my name is Lirio Valenzuela and for my observation, um, for my video presentation, I decided to observe a three-year-old boy um, whose ethnicity is Hispanic. Um, as of the prenatal development and birth, both mom and dad are very healthy and fit individuals. S mom also did not work at the time of the pregnancy Therefore, her stress levels were very low and healthy. Um, there was no, t there is no teratogens during the time of pregnancy. Um, mom did explain a few complications in regards to her being able, not being able to dilate during her labors. Therefore, her doctor and herself decided to do a C-section for this birth. Um, my participant was breastfed from one year old to, I'm sorry, from birth to a uh, one year of age. And at six months was, he was slowly transitioned to more f options in foods such as, uh, mashed potatoes and mashed bananas and Gerber purees, which, um, chapter two does say that that is usually the, you know, in traditional cultures, that is usually the time range where um, babies are tr uh, introduced to more solid foods. Um, for physical development, my participant is currently uh, 35 inches tall and he currently weights 33 pounds. Um, for the mortar and fine for the gross, for the gross and fine mortar skills, um, we took the little boy to a petting zoo during this observation, and <clears throat> I was able to observe that the little boy does um, walk independently without being held or carried, and he does like to run around. Um, during this observation, the participant was given a can where. Inside the can, he had to get the grains out to feed the chickens. And um, the participant manipulated the can and was trying to open the lid. He did struggle a little bit and dad offered to help, but he, the little boy refused to give up the can. And um, he continued to attempt manipulating the can until he was able to you know, open, open it successfully. Um, I also observed my participant use his hands to hold uh, a, a, a cup of water and was able to drink out of the cup of water with very minimal spillage. Um, sleep patterns and changes. My participant takes uh, from, takes one or two naps a day um, and every nap is around two to three hours long and he does sleeps um, he does sleeps through uh, thoroughly at night um, chapter two also talks about how traditional cultures um, often sleep with their babies and um, this is a case of uh, my participant, he does sleep with parents and is now tr uh, being trained to sleep on his own. Uh, my participant does eat homemade meals, um, such as chicken and rice or any soup and vegetables. However, even though he does enjoy these meals, he does prefer chicken nuggets. His vaccinations are also up to date. Uh, for the cognitive development part of the observation, um, according to the Piaget's theory of cognitive development, my participant is in the second stage for his age. Um, the second stage is the pre-operational stage in where children begin to engage in symbolic play and they learn to manipulate symbols. For example, my participant was able to hold a stick, um, a stick and was representing a horse since we were at the farm. Um, and, you know, he would do the sounds of a horse. 
for object permanence, my participant was able to play and run around while the father was present and the mother was present. However, when both of them walked away, um, he would look around and he would continue to play. There was no fear. There was, he didn't really, go, he didn't get up and walk over. Um, maybe because he knew that the parents would come back to get him. Um, so he continued to play and run around as normal. Um, for his attention span, um, I did uh, observe that he had a very short attention span. He would take a few seconds, look at whatever animal we were uh, observing at the time, and then after a minute or so, he would quickly try to go to the next attraction or the next animal attraction. Um, I did observe him on the way home as well. And on the ride home, parents gave him a tablet to entertain himself while, you know, during the commute. However, he didn't seem as interested in the tablet as he um, seems to be, which is strange. <laughs> Um, as of language acquisition, um, he does know a few words. The little boy is bilingual. Therefore, most of the words that he knows are in English and some of them are in Spanish. He does talk in a few sentences. Um, most of his sentences are sometimes unclear. However, you are able to pick, pick up the clues and kind of tell what he's trying to say. Um, a few of the words that he says are fire truck. Um, he also says mommy or dada, which is his dad. Um, he knows a few numbers um, and he knows a few colors. Uh, for example, there was a red sign. He points and he says red or, you know, when I would point to a color, he knew the color. Um, as for the sentences, um, he does... Uh, say I want to play or for example he says motorbike I want motorbike or let's go to the park um, as emotional and as of as of the emotional and social development um, I did observe that this little boy is a very confident little boy um, he's very independent and confident um, he did fall during the observation, so, you know, he did cry, so most of his emotions were pretty relevant, you know, you cry when you're hurt, and he did smile and laugh when he was happy and when he felt better. Um, his primary caregiver are his parents, mom and dad, and, um, also a babysitter. Um, mom and dad both, uh, share custody of the little boy um, and alternate weekly so they're not together um, and when parents are at work the participant is um, taken care of by a babysitter the participant does have two other siblings but in the mom's side of the family um, the ages are eight and eleven and he learns most of his rough play through his older brothers however when he's at dad's house he is the only child and is often taken to the park where he likes to call all the other little kids his friends um something that stood out for me uh, during this observation is just how intelligent little kids are and pretty much just how important it is to really, really, you know, be mindful of all of the stages during birth, from prenatal development all the way to, you know, cognitive development. And I never really taken the, ch the, the time to really observe. But now that I had a, like a little guideline and little things that I could look and watch out for, it was just really interesting to see and to be able to relate the knowledge that we've learned in previous chapters um, to an actual human and be able to make those connections. So thank you very much for watching.